Welcome to the HBM Test and Measurement FAQ video series. Hi, I'm Bart Morick, HBM Applications Engineer, and in this video I'm going to provide a short description for the steps that need to be followed when making optical measurements and compensating for changing temperature. Optical sensors are much more sensitive to temperature change than traditional sensors. Once you are connected with Catman, you will need to adapt your signal so that it is temperature compensated. You can do this in two different manners. First, you can create a temperature compensated strain where you take the strain sensor and adapt it so that the normalization of the channel is in strain or micrometers per meter as opposed to the standard wavelength value the interrogator reads. Or secondly, you can create a computation channel that converts the raw change in wavelength into micrometers per meters and corrects it for temperature effects. Catman provides four types of compensation. A temperature compensation channel, which monitors the temperature, such as a thermocouple, over the length of the recording. Second would be an OTC sensor or optical thermocouple. Third is one of our PKF OTC sensors. And the last would be a compensating fiber bray grating sensor that sees the temperature of the test article but not the strain applied. Adapting the original signal allows you to save storage space during the recording, but all the raw wavelength data is lost. You would not be able to access this raw data in the event that you have to re-examine the data collected post-process. Creating compensation channels results in larger file sizes, but it allows you to keep the raw data in the event that you need to go back and correct. In today's webinar, we're going to discuss both methods, but we recommend the use of a compensation channel instead. When configuring Catman for temperature channels, you are offered a couple of different choices for properly correcting for any temperature issues that may arise. You may use one of the existing channels and configure it via an adaptation, or you can create a computation channel. With a temperature sensor in the chain and properly positioned, you can do the conversion from wavelength into strain via an adaptation of the raw signal. With the temperature channel configured, you will take the measured temperature at each instance and use it to compensate the measured strain. Here is the equation for temp compensated strain and how you would fill this in from information from the data sheets of the sensors you are using. This includes the gauge factor K from the calibration sheet, the thermal expansion coefficient or CTE of the specimen you are attached to, the wavelength dependence from temperature or TCS that is found on the sensor calibration sheet the reference temperature that the sensor was calibrated at and the base wavelength where you consider it at zero strain. When using a computation channel as a correction instead, the setup screen is slightly different, but the math is the same. To prevent possible errors, I would recommend using the computation channel method to ensure that the original raw wavelength data is not lost so that any post-process corrections can be easily recreated. In our OP line, we offer a dedicated fiber OTC or optical thermocouple sensor that monitors the temperature but does not see the mechanical strain the object under test does. The OTC is mounted on a small body that can be either attached via tape or adhesive to the object under test. The FBG of the OTC is isolated from any sort of mechanical effects as the body of the OTC is cantilevered and the sensor itself is floating. The OTC needs to be placed near the strain sensor so that it sees the same temperature as the object under test. The data sheet for the strain sensor and the OTC provides the values that need to be entered for proper results. We offer two different versions of this, our standard OTC shown here or a PKF OTC which is in a different style housing. A standard FBG sensor can also be used for temperature compensation. The idea is that a dummy strain sensor is installed on the same material as the article under test, but it does not see the strain the sensor does. In this method, the compensation FBG needs to be placed closely to the strain sensor so that it sees the same temperature as the gauge under test. After you've made your measurements, you can see the results of the temperature to compensation. In this example, we start by reviewing the data that was captured using a raw conversion of the change in wavelength into strain or micrometers per meter. This is strictly a thermal test with no mechanical strain and was placed on the object during the test. A sample was placed in a temperature chamber for about an hour. The temperature was held steady for about 15 minutes and then began to rise from approximately 10 to 45 degrees C. 
The red trace is our temperature trace and the green trace is the OP strain gauge without any temperature compensation. As you can see, the strain induced by the temperature correlates very closely to the shape of the temperature trace. The sensitivity of the optical gauge from changes in temperature are plainly seen and so a compensation factor must be taken into account to properly measure the strain seen in a test article over the length of the recording. Now we've taken our temperature value point by point and adjusted our strain value to form a more accurate result of the effect of the strain over a varying temperature range. This is displayed as the strain with temperature compensation in the plot here. You can see the spike in the strain as the temperature rises, but the blue trace indicates a normalized and more real result of the test article. In this final plot, we have entered the coefficient for thermal expansion of the test article component. The black trace indicates the strain in the test article once the environmental forces are removed. For more Catman specific analysis tips and tricks, please feel free to view our other pre-recorded webinars. So the fiber brag grating as a sensor is a good alternative for experimental stress analysis applications when a metal foil strain gauge just is impractical. We hope that you take a few moments and download some application notes and spec sheets from our website to learn more of what these versatile sensors can do for you. Well, thanks for watching. And if you have any questions, please feel free to call, email, or visit our website for the latest product solutions and downloads at www.hbm.com.